Hello you beautiful souls and welcome to the first video on this channel and the first video of a series of tutorials and explanations all about art and how to make it. Today I want to share with you my way of inking line art and how to create dynamic effects using black lines only. To start things off you can see that I have ink pens in several sizes and in a moment you will see why this will come in handy. Apart from liners I sometimes very much like to use a brush pen. It can be a bit tricky but it helps to create beautiful effects. What I really like about it is that it allows for a lot of movement in your lines and the feeling of movement comes from the varying line weight, which by the way is the term used to describe if a line goes from thin to thick or vice versa. In general, I think it doesn't matter which brand of fine liners you're using. I personally keep alternating between various brands and I also always like to try new ones. If you intend to keep your line art as it is, it also doesn't matter what kind of ink pens you are working with. If you want to color over your line art or maybe even use watercolors at a later stage, make sure that it's waterproof liners, otherwise you might mess up your lines and that would be a pity. I already got started inking my drawing and I usually begin with the smallest size available when working on the details of the face. Especially the eyes have a lot of details. So from there, I gradually choose bigger sizes, moving on to the parts that aren't as detailed. Usually I try to alternate between three or four different sizes because that just helps create a bit of dynamic. The further outward I go, the bigger my liner gets. From here on, I take my biggest liner and I go over all the lines that are still remaining. And I think we should all just disregard that I kept my finger on the lens because I'm still new to this, so... Yeah. If you're inking over your pencil lines, as I'm doing with this piece, you can always put down a sheet of paper underneath your hand so you won't smudge your lines. A lot of times I feel like those kind of videos create a full sense of how fast or how quick inking can be. And a lot of times I also heard people say that they feel quite insecure that it's taking them such a long time. And to this I just want to say I think I sped it up by 20 times or something in the range of it. It actually takes a lot of time also for me so please keep that in mind and don't be hard on yourself. Now, in this section of the drawing, we have a lot of stuff going on. And if you don't want your lines to just blend into one another, you have to differentiate. For the outer part, I'm using my biggest liner. And when I'm done with that, I go back in with a smaller liner. It doesn't have to be much smaller, but just a little bit of difference will already create quite the effect. Thank you. 
When doing plain line art, most of the dynamic comes from the placement of shadows. And there's different ways using ink only. One of those techniques is drawing finer lines where your shadows are supposed to be. And to make them darker, you can always go back over them or draw them thicker or even layer more strokes in different angles. And this technique is called crosshatching. Crosshatching can look really amazing, but I tend to not use it as much. Instead, I do this, and here comes the brush pen back into play. With the brush pen, I go back in and revisit some lines, especially the ones on the bottom or on the lower sides. I also go over other parts of the drawing, like for example the hair, and by doing this, I kind of set the section apart from the rest. It looks a bit more moved to the front, and that's exactly what I'm going for. Now, this is the most satisfying part for me. Under the chin usually is the biggest shadow, and personally, I love adding this big chunk of black ink. The necklace also gets some shadows, but of course, only on the lower parts, because that's where the shadow naturally is. At the end, if I feel like my drawing could need a few more lines, I go back in with one of the thin liners and add a few more details, but don't overdo it. And that's how I ink my artworks and why I do it the way that I do. I hope this was useful and I was able to teach you a little trick or two. Thank you for watching and if you would like to see more, please consider subscribing to my channel. I mean, that way you're also showing me that you're interested in what I'm doing. So yeah, do that.